Yeah, every time they respond to a call, the NYPD has to be prepared for anything. But a recent deadly friendly fire shooting in Queens is raising questions about training and tactics, even though officer involved shootings are rare. Chief Investigative Reporter Jonathan Deans has an exclusive look at what the NYPD has been doing to try to reduce police shootings and to try to keep cops, communities, and yes, even criminals safe. Police fire 42 shots in 11 seconds. Eight bullets hit the suspect wielding a fake gun. One shot of friendly fire hits a sergeant in the leg. Another taking the life of Detective Brian Simonson. Police do train to avoid these tragedies, especially scenarios like this one, responding to an armed suspect in unfamiliar territory. But crime data we obtained shows a shooting like this one isn't the norm, it's the exception. Police, show me your hands. NYPD detectives searching for a suspect. He's got a phone in his hand. What kind this time, he's armed only with a phone. Keep your hands up. And no Keep shots fired. Up. Move a little to see a little. In these training scenarios, time and again, suspect, stop right there. Detectives are sent into a crisis. From this vantage point, not knowing what might be around the corner. I got two corners till nothing's okay. seen. Increased training here. Our corner's good. To try to prevent shootings. One out here. Target on the right hand side. We were along with Warren Squad detectives as they went to make arrests of fugitives. Some violent offenders. All went smoothly this day. Voluntary compliance is our ultimate goal. Inspector Thomas Conforti helps to oversee the NYPD's training programs. We really look to slow things down and have our investigators fully assess the situation they're getting into before they breach that door. This is just one video where police say increased training paid off. A suspected gunman entered a bodega. Police fearing a holdup, they moved in together and watch as they restrain the suspect, removing a handgun from his waistband before a holdup can start. If they go into a situation well versed with that information and well prepared, uh, they're, they're more likely to be able to resolve that without having to escalate the situation. In the 1970s and 80s, crime and violence were on the rise, followed by the crack epidemic as were police shootings. In 1972, there were nearly a 1,000 police-related shootings. In 1995, the number dropped to 345. In 2012, 105. This past year, there were 35. Take out accidental shootings, dog incidents, and suicide, and the number drops to just 17 police shootings at actual suspects in all of 2018. We can all say it's good as headed down. Al Sharpton, one of the NYPD's toughest critics, says the reduction in police shootings is significant. We need to match that with holding accountability to those that have crossed the line. That will make it go down even more because police will know that they cannot get away with crossing the line. NYPD officials stress every shooting incident is reviewed. And we address any tactical and training issues uh, almost immediately. I want to stay tight to the wall. Increased training, to trying to prepare officers for tough decisions. Decisions that at times must be made in just seconds. Jonathan Deanst, News 4 New York.